Let me ask you a question. In the Piper classification in relation to scanning, technically that's based out of a fully seated joint. Is that correct? Or could one say that I'm shooting out of MIP and I can arrive at a legitimate Piper classification out of MIP? No, it's static and dynamic. And so static would be static would be your starting set position for the joint, which is fully seated condyle or or what many people refer to as CR. Right. Uh, so that is that is more or less uh, can be in some patients a strained joint position. In other people it may just be normal because the disc is in place. Uh, but in the scan sequencing, uh, we do look at MIP mm -hmm. and then we look functionally at what the joint is doing at incisal edge position okay. and then we look <clears throat> functionally at what the joint is doing in translated condylar position. So as an example, there may be a 4A disc. What that means is that the ligaments medial and lateral pole are, are torn and loose and in the fully seated position, the disc is out of place. Mm -hmm. In a 4A, the condyle will eventually translate beneath the disc. So then the question becomes, okay, where does that occur? Does the condyle translate beneath the disc at MIP? Right. Or does it not translate beneath the disc until incisal edge position, in edge to edge on the incisors? Yeah. Or do we actually have to get the condyle to translate much more down the slope of the eminence to see a recapture? So any of those could be a stage 4A, but those different occurrences and where the disc recaptures may vary our so-called treatment position. Right. Okay. So for example, in, in anatomically imaging the TMJ, let's say fully seated condylar position, we're off the disc. You go to MIP and the condyle is underneath the disc normally. Okay, that's treatment position. So in that case, MIP is the selected treatment position. And maybe, maybe it's incisal edge position. Now that, that raises the dilemma, okay, what is the joint doing at incisal edge position? Right. Okay. Quite frankly, sometimes the joint's not doing anything. It's neutral condylar positioning. The condyle's where it's supposed to be, and the disc is where it's supposed to be at incisal edge position. It may be a case that's had bite surgery that during the during the osteotomy the the condyle was pushed up and back off the disc. Right. Uh, and the bite looks great, maxillary intercuspation looks great, but the joint is strained. Right. And then when they bite forward to incisal edge position, the condyle may be under the disc, but obviously the bite doesn't match that joint relationship. Yep. That's a mismatch. A mismatch. Mm -hmm. So you, you see, I think, and we could probably go into a lot of our own reasons why we select what we select to do the CT scan. Sure. Uh, but you know, if you've got backup diagnosis to tell you more of what's mechanically going on in the TMJ, uh, then I think that's better. And for example, uh, very often times at MIP on the, on the MRI, we're not under the disc, but the spatial relationship looks normal, okay? Yeah. So is that still the best treatment position? And I think taking the CT and MIP, um, you know, you can you can pick up what the joint is doing. You can pick up a mismatch between the bite and the joint, for example, which is almost always iatrogenic. Uh, you can pick up that mismatch. Uh, you could probably extrapolate that, you know, MIP is not a good position of treatment from and, and scan from there. Mm -hmm. But what do you do with the patient who has normal joint space, normal looking bone, yeah. and you're taking MIP and things look good in the bite, things look good in the spatial relationship in the TMJ, but they're still off their desk. Yeah.
Okay. You see, that's where you would miss. That's would miss that's the diagnosis. key. That's the important thing. You know, the soft tissue imaging is what's missing. That's what's almost universally missing in most every dental practice on the planet.